sort of people have to be knocked off just because a young person is coming along. Miriam, when you put your, your, you know, your scheduler, you know, commissioning editor in a bracket where there was an awful lot of brain there because you were transferred from daytime to evening because your show was doing really well mm -hmm. with a, you, you as presenter. And it seems very odd, as soon as it goes to night evening show, that they get rid of the success story in the first place. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a good point, because it's OK to put older people on TV in daytime, and you'll see lots of older men and women on daytime. Um, but when it comes to prime, prime time, time, there's a different attitude. There's a feeling that only youth sells on prime okay. time. What about your restaurants, Anthony? What was the average age of your waiting staff? Probably about 19. Hmm. Um, but funny enough, I mean... Are there the, older waiters and waitresses Yeah, there are there in certain, restaurant for, certain parts of, the, uh, of our community. There are, but not... So much in re youthful restaurants there, if I can put it like that. I mean, the, it's the young who spend the money in many cases. I mean, so, and yet so, you get to another end where the retired people also spend money, and but you don't get the sort of older professional waiter. It's, it's, it's a slightly bad profession are they to because they, Is it because they've become... I'm just fascinated, because my, my dad was on mm. the scrap career-wise in his very early 50s. And you do wonder, because he was much more expensive mm. than somebody younger than him, and I wonder whether it, 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 that that's it's, it's cruel, harsh capitalism at work. I think undoubtedly. I mean, the only problem with our profession is that waiters don't treat it as a profession. They're waiting for another job, yeah. you know, generally, and, and which is such okay. a shame. It's not a profession. But um, I, I, I do think there's room for people to stay in their job if they're good at their job. That's the key, and you're obviously and, good at well, your the, job. Well, the thing about my case is that we weren't even considered. We were dismissed out of hand, the four middle-aged women. You said in, your, in the Tonight Show, mm. if you were 15 years younger, you would have been given serious consideration. Yeah, that's what the judges and said. I, I, and I can, I can see yeah. uh, how unfair that is. Now, Katie, yesterday we were talking a little bit about uh, Strictly yeah. and your views on that, if you want to expand. Well, no, I just I think that, you know, it, it, it is... It is obviously something which, in light entertainment particularly, applies to women and not men. And the, say, the evidence of that as well as is right in front of you. You can't possibly watch Strictly Come Dancing and not see that Bruce Forsyth is, you know, probably almost double the age of Tess Daly. And it's, it, but the, the issue is that I think that becomes, in people's perceptions, as normal telly. Yes. Um, whereas if you reversed it, you know, if you had Gloria Hunniford and Vernon Kay, I mean, I know the age difference isn't that as big as it is with Bruce and Tess. But, you know, people go, God, what am I watching? Um, and yet it's no difference in terms of age. It's only in our perception. Isn't and that I... the case, though, that it, it just in terms of, uh, uh, of, of couples, if you see an older man with a younger woman, we yeah. look at that as normal. But yeah. if you see an older woman with a younger man, she's a cougar, yeah. she's, <laughs> she's a cradle snatcher. But I think... Um, and I think, yes, yeah, so, and it is jarring. I'm not going to say that I wouldn't find it odd to watch initially, but I think it's not, it's not good enough for people like Michael Burke, and I'm not sure what the context of his, whether he was being tongue-in-cheek there or serious or what. Yeah, right, I OK. Think he was um, too. Right, well, that's, that's another show, isn't it, perhaps? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe after the watershed. But, um, Burke by the, name, um, uh, Burke yeah. by, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, uh, I think it's not good enough for people to say... It's what the public want, and therefore we ought to give it to them. Okay. Because and that's you know, not we the found case. It's not what the public wants. No. No. And that no. came across very clearly. And also, I think it's also, just, just quickly, it's dangerous to say it's tokenism to have a woman or a minority person, because what that implies is that there is no woman or, or per person of an ethnic minority or a minority group who isn't capable of doing the job. It depends how it's, depends how it's done. If you have, Somebody if has you have, to be good if, at it. When, when we first saw uh, more people of colour on TV, they were working as cashiers in soap operas yeah. or criminals, and yeah. we have to move be, beyond that. Uh, it's a huge subject. We've heard a little of what the panel think. After the break, a chance to hear some of your thoughts. The overriding question, does everyone have a shelf life? If older people don't get elbowed, how else can younger people get a foot on the ladder? A problem exacerbated by the fact perhaps we're all living longer. Uh, 027 173 555. That's the number you need. Your calls are nothing but your calls. <laughs> What I did on my holidays. Treat your family to a holiday they'll never forget. With Easter breaks from only £199 for the whole family.
Call or visit haven.com. Haven, Britain's favourite seaside holiday. Every week in The Sun's Buzz magazine, we have all the best beauty and fashion tips. And in our Valentine's special, we've teamed up with Barry M to give every reader a free makeup kit worth over £9. Get your Barry M lip gloss, eyeliner and nail polish to complete your Valentine's look. And read the secrets behind the big Corrie Valentine's wedding. Go glam with your free Barry M makeup offer in Buzz magazine, only in this Saturday's Sun. What makes Great Ormond Street Hospital special? It's got lots of toys and it doesn't smell funny. Is it that we bring hope to hundreds of thousands of sick children with complex and life-threatening illnesses? My nurse is called Linda and she makes me laugh. Or that our nurses and doctors offer some of the best specialist care in the world. But what makes Great Ormond Street Hospital even more special are the people who support us. Will you join them by giving three pounds a month so we can help more sick children? My mummy lives with me here. Three pounds.